welcome to this week's installment of the Bibliophiles Garden. And my standard disclaimer, I'm a professional librarian, but I'm an amateur gardener. So please don't expect too much. Just kidding. <laughs> so today we're talking about cilantro. Last week I called cilantro the herb that just wouldn't die. And I say that with a lot of love and surprise because if you see here, these one, two, three, in my little plot right here, I was completely surprised that these did not die last winter. Show them that one too. And it was a nice surprise. So I did my research and I found that um, cilantro's, cilantro is a cold weather herb. I mean, it's, it's you should plant it in like the fall, early spring. And, but normally they do die in the winter. But I know last winter, I think we got one snow fall, so it was pretty mild. So maybe that's the reason why. And another reason could be is that I left one of these collard green plants over here, but I had a few more in this plot, and I think they might have helped to shield them from the elements because they were covering over the cilantro plants. So cilantro, we're used to it. If you go to Chipotle, if you like Spanish cuisine, or um, even Asian food, it's used a lot in that type of cooking. It's an herb that is rich in vitamins A, C, and K, and it has other health benefits as well. Also, the flavor is a bit more robust than parsley. So usually if you have a dish that you add cilantro to, you really add it at the end of the cooking process because you don't want it to lose its flavor. And a funny thing about cilantro is that you it seems like you either love it or you have a group of people that really hate it. And it's not their fault, and it's not the herb's fault. Turns out that some people in their DNA, if their DNA has a certain, uh, I guess, twist or mutation or whatever, I'm not a geneticist, they, um, it will make cilantro smell and taste like salt to them. So they come by it honestly. They hate cilantro, but it's not their fault. It's in their DNA. But for the majority of us, we really can't, uh, many of us love this herb. And it's easy to grow. And what I want to show you is that these plants I grew from seeds last year. And these are the cilantro seeds. These little, they're dried. When they're not dried, they're green when they're still on the flowers. And people usually, if they crush these seeds and grind it into a powder, that's where you get your coriander seasoning from. Now, it's funny. I like cilantro. I do not like coriander seasoning, but that's just me. But these are the seeds that you can plant in your garden. And you plant them. I think I'll plant one for you today. But um, if everything goes according to plan, you should do it after, let me see, towards the end of winter, like early spring plant them because they are a cold, a cool weather herb. After a few weeks, you'll have your cilantro leaves coming up. And when they're like this, and it's great, you're cooking, you have your chicken or your fish or whatever you want to put it on. You can just come out to your garden and you can just take your little scissors like this and cut you a few sprigs of cilantro. Some people get really like technical with it. They cut the offshoots or the, no, they could cut this part, the tallest part so that they can keep the rest of the plant. Like these are going to grow out. I'm not a, that exact, but I'm not a hater either. Whichever way you prefer, that's on you. Now, what you can do, this is around, the way these plants are now, this is when you should be harvesting the stems and the leaves because the stems are still tender and the leaves are just right for cooking. But as summer progresses, that's a good thing if you wanna harvest their seeds because the hotter it gets, the more prone these are to bolt. If you remember from the collard green video, when these plants bolt, that means that they're getting ready to produce seeds. Like my little collard green over here, that has bolted. These are gonna be flowers and those are gonna be my seed crop for this year. So with the cilantro, what would happen, and you can kind of see it starting to happen with this one. The middle stem will grow up higher and it's gonna get thicker and tougher. And then before you know it, you'll have white flowers being produced. And after a while, the leaves themselves will get thin and feathery. And on the flowers, you'll see green seeds which are the coriander seeds. The green seeds are the coriander that has not been dried out. And 
if you can you can either harvest them and dry them out yourself or you can let them drop the seeds and then hopefully more cilantro will come back in your garden in that season or maybe even next year you'll have a surprise so this is our little visit with cilantro and as promised i'm going to plant a seed for you i have my trowel and i'm just digging a little hole mind you normally i would have went and bought some new garden soil but as you know we are living in interesting times so i'm making do with what i have and dirt is dirt is dirt i know that's not true but it works for me so you got your two seeds drop so I'm covering up my seed Ooh. and what i did get which will be another episode i took from my little homegrown compost heap I gotta thank my husband for this because he's the one who maintains it. I'm gonna put a little compost over it. And actually I'm gonna put more of this compost in the rest of this seed bed before I go inside today. The weather's so nice. And compost is something, instead of throwing away your orange peels and tea bags, is some, a way you can recycle at home. And I wanna put a little water. Want your plant coming up? And in the meantime, I'm going to continue to harvest these. And um, hopefully I'll be able to get some seeds if they bolt later on this summer. And also, before we go, you can freeze cilantro. It maintains its flavor when you freeze it. I wouldn't recommend drying it because we, it's, the flavor is not the same. So it's better to freeze them and then come back, put them in a Ziploc bag, and you'll still have that flavor. So that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed today's edition of the Bibliophiles Garden. And next time, I think we're gonna take a visit to our greenhouse. If you, um, as you can see, we believe in upcycling materials, you'll see a lot of recycled materials in that greenhouse. So we will see you next time. Stay safe, flatten that curve, and please go outside in your backyard and start gardening. Oh. I want to include a picture that a very good friend of mine sent. You can grow, grow cilantro on your windowsill in a glass jar if you have limited outside space. So you'll see that picture post vid video credits. There's always a way to uh, grow your own food. All right. Have a great day, everybody.